But overthinking anything doesn't work. You know, there's that phrase, keep it simple, stupid. And that's it. I think over the time that I've been acting um, and auditioning, you're certainly faced with a lot more rejection than you are with, you know, succeeding in getting roles. And it's a very impersonal process as well. There might be something about your face that reminds the director of someone he doesn't like and for that very reason it's that fickle and you won't get the job. You know, to be an actor and to love acting is performing and to have the opportunity to audition a couple of times a week means that you've got th three or four captive audiences that week and you may not be right for the part but you still have the opportunity to make somebody's day in the same sense that people go pay money and go to the cinema to worry and you never know if you're going to catch somebody off guard and if you go in not knowing exactly what it is that you're doing you you sort of run into hurdles a bit and also there's the counterpart to that is that if you're too prepared you're too fixed in a process and there's no room for collaboration i remember one audition in particular they it was in America and they asked me to do it in an Australian accent. Or they phrased, would you like to do it in an Australian accent? And I said, no, not really. And that came back as me not being cooperative or me not being there for that process. And that's the thing that you have to remember is that it's, it's all about the play and the how do you take direction and how do you do this and that. And you know, that kind of made me look bad. So I seceded pretty quickly and wrote a letter, you know, explaining the nerves or whatever the stakes were for that particular audition. There's always a huge risk of coming across a little too wanted of the thing. And sometimes you hear stories about people's flippant attitude towards something and then that's the thing that people are drawn to. Because the thing that you have to keep in mind as well is that the casting people have been doing this for 40, 50 hours that week, looking at faces, coming in, making an assessment, writing it down, moving on to the next person. And so if you go into an audition and you want it really bad, that'll bleed through and then they smell that desperation and then you don't get it and you beat yourself up over it. It's sort of like, well, what did you expect? It's not like you see a pretty girl and then you go just straight in and you totally botch it by asking too many questions or making bad jokes that aren't funny and then you sort of run away kicking yourself, being like, oh, why did I say that? Why did I say that? So it's sort of like, well, you said that. So don't say it next time, and then reflect on it, and then that's it, yeah. Making sure it's got high, uh, high value, whether you've got a lapel microphone on or whether you're you know, lit well and correctly, because sometimes these people will watch a self-tape as an afterthought at the end of a very long day where they have been watching, you know, 50 faces come through the room and you might be something that they're watching on their iPhone. And so if they're not, if you're not grabbing them, the attention span and the focus is even less so than what it might be. A big part of auditioning for me is finding the interest in it and being really passionate about it in a very condensed frame of time. And then as soon as it's gone out of your, you know, out of your process of what you need to be doing to fulfill your role of auditioning, then just forget about it. If you carry it around with you and you don't get the part, that's going to be a letdown. Whereas if you forget about it and move on to the next thing that interests you and you don't get it, that's not a letdown, that's just your job. You know? And then if you do get it, oh, it's a lovely surprise. Who would have thought? Or maybe they want more tapes or maybe they want to see something different. And, you know, the possibilities are endless, but you also have to keep in mind that when people are reviewing what you've been sending in, the possibilities are endless as well. You know, they may have had a bad day. Somebody may have missent the file. You never quite know. So you sort of, you secede a lot of control with a self-tape, but again, it's just another side to the auditioning process these days. Even if you are not particularly engaged in what the content is that you're auditioning for, it's your job to audition. It's not, it's not your job just to make all the jobs and you know, kind of roll around on the red carpets and shoot your pistols from the hip or whatnot. 
And it's that very thing. You can always say no to an opportunity once it's presented itself, but you should be very gung-ho because, again, these casting people might be elevated to higher positions still, or maybe they'll champion you down the line because they've come to know you. It doesn't matter if the job is the next day or if it's in two months. You just have to maximise those time frames to do as much as you can for what you need to do. And obviously, if you stress too much about it, you're going to carry that stress in with you. And so personally, if I've got a job, I'll just read the script over and over and over until it's in my head. I don't recall learning lines specifically over the last couple of years because I've been familiar with the text to the point where I'm just thinking about it a lot. And um, I watch a lot of YouTube videos and do a lot of sort of independent research just to flavour the different thoughts that are sort of going on in my head. But yeah, feel for the world, a feel for the sort of emotional state that you might need to inhabit, like whether you're playing an angry person or whether you need to be focused or quite adept at something. Or um, you have to you have to just look at it from all angles about what it is that you can help bring to the part keeping in mind what it was that got you the part in the first place. And a lot of that sort of communication and sometimes you're fortunate to have a lot of dialogue with the people that are making the thing and other times it's sort of a no, 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 come Tuesday and just come prepared, you know, but come prepared to the point where you're, you're able to change and you're able to have a flexibility if it need be. A lot of the, you know, lessons that are good lessons to master going into an occupation like being an actor are things that you've known since you were a child, really. Like, sit up straight, listen, you know, don't be late, do your homework. And that's sort of it. And then if you screw something up or if something doesn't go as planned on the day, then you'll adapt with it and, and change. And if you don't adapt with it, then maybe that's it. Or if you show up late to work for a couple of days, maybe they fire you. Or maybe you're not expendable, but they're frustrated enough with you to, you know, not cover you maybe the way that you should be as a character or something like that. But you just have to keep in mind a really strong sense of professionalism and have a desire to get better technically and emotionally or creatively so that you can keep being better and better and better and taking as much from it as you can as an educational experience. It's hugely important to have a life outside of it because otherwise you're not going to grow. You know, if you, you're the aggregate of the five people you hang around, and let's say your friends are all total deadbeats that aren't going anywhere, then you're not going to be developing as an actor outside of whatever work you're putting in as an actor. And you have to, you have to be interested in things. You have to have a great sense of curiosity and have a desire to learn things or question things or challenge yourself or push yourself to certain places so that way, you know, you fully realise who you are as a human being and as an adult as well, knowing that if you're, you know, if you've got the mental, emotional sort of capacities of a 15 year old boy and you're bordering 30, then that's going to show to everybody and no one's going to want to work with that because you're not, unless you look like a 15 year old boy and you're a 30 year old man boy or whatever it is, then, you know, maybe, but it's, some great advice I got early on was just, just do shit hunt, learn how to ride motorbikes or horses or fucking... I can't swear here, can I? We can, we can. No. Um, yeah, some great advice I once got was just do lots of stuff. Do plentiful stuff, you know. Adopt new skill sets, challenge yourself. Because if you're not challenging yourself for anything, you're not developing any further. And that's it. And there's that thing too where people, you know, you meet a composer Hey, how are you? What's going on? Oh, not much. I just, uh, actually, I just wrote an opera. And then you say, oh, wow, I wish I could do that. And it's like, well, of course you could do that. It just requires a lot of work and patience and application, but anything's possible to anybody. It's just about having that mentality that anything is possible if you approach it in the right way, yeah. There's a huge benefit to training. I think technical abilities are probably the most important thing, but you have to know the technicalities to be able to throw them away. And acting for cameras is a lot more instinctual than stage acting because you're not projecting to the rear audience. 
but you have to you have to bear in mind the constraints of where the attention's being directed. And that's the point of the director in that it's a frame. It could be here, it could be there. And I also think it's very important to have huge instinctual abilities as an actor and to be able to hit emotional places and understand where it's singing true or singing false. But you won't be able to realise that unless you've got a perspective on what it is that you're doing. But acting in general is a total blend of all of those things. It's a sort of unified field of different abilities and being able to block out different things. And, you know, maybe the people that are very instinctual as actors have a hard time blocking out anything. So they get very, uh, you know, they drive inwards with all their attention and maybe that makes it difficult in some respects, but you have to be adaptable and it serves to have a laser-like focus and it also serves to be totally mindful of everything that's going on around you on a technical sense as well. Um, and you just have to bear in mind that everybody is a unique individual. They'll try to put you in a box or tell you that you're the next this person or, or you're just like a young that person and it's all nonsense because you're you and that's all you've got is yourself. And so you have to be the best kind of most adaptable versatile version of yourself so that you can achieve anything that you want to. And that's sort of it. I think anything's possible for anybody. You just have to plan and apply and reflect if things go right and reflect if things go wrong. And then move on to the next thing. Yeah.